everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today I am here with my Jane Austen July TBR. I am so thrilled to be participating in Jane Austen July yet again. Yes, I'm wearing my Jane Knight t-shirt, but it is pulled up a bit so I'm going to pull that down to its normal length now and talk you through the books that I have chosen to fit the prompts. The prompts are the same every year and I have to say that when Marissa and Katie started this readathon, they did an excellent job picking prompts that always feed new ideas. So for Jane Austen July, of course the goal is to read some of Austen herself. The first goal being to read one of her six major novels. This year I will be reading the group read, which is Sense and Sensibility. Of course this is a reread for me, I have read all of her novels many times over now, but I am really thrilled to be reading this Wordsworth edition because they have the Hugh Thompson illustrations, and I've never read this particular edition before, so I'm really excited to see what he imagined all of these characters to look like. Sense and Sensibility is also what got me into Austen, not reading the book, that took me a few years, but I saw the movie about two years before that and absolutely fell in love with it. So I'm really excited to revisit these characters. The second challenge is to read some of Austen's shorter or unfinished works. So for that I will also be participating in the group read which is to read The Watsons and Sanditon, which I have here in this bind-up volume of a lot of her shorter works. I again have read both of these, but not for a long time. I read the few chapters of Sanditon that we have about four years ago, and I read The Watsons 10 or 11 years ago actually, so I'm very excited to be revisiting both of them. Then we have the slightly more varied prompts, one of which is to read nonfiction about Austen herself or about the time in which she lived. So I have two books that could fit this prompt. The first is, yes, I say I'm going to read this every year, but this year I really do want to make it a priority, and that is reading Jane Austen's England by Roy and Leslie Adkins. This has a different title in the UK, I'm not sure why, but it is exactly what it sounds like, a tour of Georgian and Regency England. So I'm really excited to see what this couple give me in terms of insight into daily life. Then I have also had this book on my TBR for ages, so I want to make this one a priority, and it is The Beau Monde by Hannah Grieg, and this is the kind of the opposite, but a natural pairing of Jane Austen's England. This looks at the upper crust of Georgian society. This looks at high, high class society. Hannah Grieg is a very well thought of historian, so I'm excited to see what she has to say in this fantastic book. Another prompt is to read a work that is influenced by Austen, so either a spin-off book based on one of her novels or a book set in the Regency, and I have several books for this. The first is a new release, it's The Perils of Lady Catherine de Bourgh by Claudia Gray, and this is the third book in her Miss Tilney and Mr. Darcy mystery series. I loved the first two, the first one was The Murder of Mr. Wickham, which was very popular and it has continued. We had the death of Mrs. Willoughby last year, now we are playing with characters from Pride and Prejudice. I really love that she's taking it one novel at a time after the first one. It's very much reminding me of Carrie Bebris's Mr. and Mrs. Darcy mystery series that I read back when I was in high school. So in this we have the son of the Darcys and the daughter of the Tilneys, who have been teaming up over the past couple of novels inadvertently to solve crimes that happen close to them. 
So in this one, Lady Catherine de Bourgh seems to be under threat. Someone seems to be trying to set out and kill her. And so it's up to Juliet and Jonathan to try and figure out what is going on, who is doing this, why are they doing it, and how can they be stopped. These are always really well-written books. Claudia Gray always has really interesting perspective on all of these well-known Austen characters, as well as giving us romantic plot lines, mystery plot lines, and looking at probably what it would have been like to have been neurodivergent in the Regency. It's never explicitly stated, but I'm pretty sure that young Mr. Darcy is written to be neurodivergent. And this one is blurbed by Mimi Matthews, who I also love. I also have two arcs that would fit this prompt. The first is A Lady's Fortune by Jane Dunn. Jane Dunn is probably best well known for being a fantastic historian. I think she wrote the famous dual biography of Elizabeth I and Mary Queen of Scots. However, in the past couple of years, she has branched out to write lots of historical romances, mainly set in the Regency. So this is the latest book that she has written. I'm really not sure what it's about, I'm going in blind, but I've enjoyed her others, so I'm intrigued to see what this one is like. And the last one I have had for ages, but I've been saving it for Jane Austen July, because it hit me that that would be the perfect time to read it, and that is If I Loved You Less by Amna Qureshi, which is an Emma retelling but featuring a Muslim heroine in modern day on Long Island. I live quite close to Long Island. My parents grew up on Long Island. I still have a lot of family living there. So I'm really excited to see an Austin retelling. In the modern day, I have loved other Austin retellings that pull on the similarities between Regency culture and Muslim culture in a place that I know relatively well. Plus, Emma has to be one of my top two favorite Austen novels, so doubly exciting. The last book prompt is to read a book written by one of Austen's contemporaries. You can stretch this a little bit to include something that Austen herself might have read, or one that was written by an author published a couple years after Austen's death. The longer you keep going with Jane Austen July, the harder it is to find books that will fit this prompt. But I found one. So this year I hope to read Waverly by Sir Walter Scott. Sir Walter Scott was publishing around the same time that Austen did. He actually critiqued some of her work in literary magazines. I think he might be mentioned in some of her novels as well. And this one was in fact published during her lifetime. I honestly wasn't sure, but it was. It was 1814. And this book probably started one of his most popular series, certainly within the Regency. The Waverly series, I believe, at least this book at least, tells the story of the Jacobite Revolution of 1745, the one featuring Bonnie Prince Charlie, if you're at all familiar with Outlander, that uprising. So in reading the back, this book follows one particular young man, one particular soldier, who is English, he's in the Hanoverian army, but he is sent up to Scotland and gets caught up in everything that's going on there. And besides that, falls in love with a Scottish woman and all of his loyalties and everything he thought is put to the test. It's a manageable size, one of his most popular. The train station in Edinburgh is named Waverley Station for this novel. I need to find out what all the fuss is about. The last two prompts are watching prompts, and I actually might need your help with the last one. The first is to watch an adaptation of one of Austen's main novels. So of course I can watch Sense and Sensibility. I have two film versions. I have the 95 film version and the 2008 miniseries, and I honestly love both of them for different reasons. So I will definitely be watching either one or both, possibly doing a comparison. I haven't decided yet, 
but the second prompt is to watch an Austin spinoff. And here's where I get stuck. I'm running out of spinoffs. I've seen quite a lot of them. Ideally, I'd like to stick with the Sense and Sensibility, Sanditon, Watson's kind of theme to be able to compare what I've read with what I watch. Honestly, I know people rave about Fire Island. It's never really appealed to me. That main actor just rubs me the wrong way. There's no reason for it. I'm sure he's a lovely person, but just can't bring myself to watch it. I saw ages ago, I watched the web series of Eleanor and Marianne Take Barton, which took Sense and Sensibility and reset it at a university, and it was good. Maybe I'll rewatch that, I'm not sure. I've seen the entire adaptation of Sanditon, which I would consider a spin-off since we have about five chapters of it and the rest was Andrew Davies' creation, but I watched it once. I don't feel the need to watch it again. As far as I know, no one has done anything with the Watsons. I've seen Clueless many times, I've seen Bride and Prejudice many times. I'm running out of ideas. If you have ideas of things you think I should watch as an Austin spin-off, let me know down below. It might spark something. I mean, there is also that terrible Hallmark Channel version of Sense and Sensibility that I think they made, but I don't know if I want to put myself through that. I really don't. Those of you in the US will understand the incredible level of cheesiness that Hallmark movies tend to have. The promo on television was entirely too saccharine for my liking. So that is my one dilemma, but my many joys that I have to look forward to this month. Let me know down below if you're participating, if you have any suggestions for me, or if you are looking for ideas to fill any of these prompts. I also have playlists of my bookshelf tours and videos detailing my specific Jane Austen themed books, which you are welcome to check out. If you have a specific question, let me know. I'd love to give you suggestions. But until next time, be safe, be well, and happy reading. Bye everyone!